uh, distinguished uh, scholars and journalists uh, gathered here with a broad and deep background in diplomacy, foreign policy, nation building, human development, geopolitical conflict resolution, and among other relevant subject matters. We all agree that... Uh, um, so many people have not known him greatly around the world, but people who have known him, they have very high esteem. So one of them says, there is not a single documentary photographer in the Indian subcontinent who is untouched by Shri. He belongs to the world. He gave us the sky in which we learn to fly. That's coming from photographer Ronnie Sen of India. To ask uh, Mr. Uh, Mushfiq al Fazal uh, to, to say a, a few words. Mr. Uh, Fazal is a U.S. correspondent uh, for Just News uh, in New York. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, are you are going to uh, do a presentation. All right. So thank you very much for this wonderful seminar. And the title is Simplification of Targeting Media and Journalists on Human Rights and Democracy. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Bangladesh Policy Alliance of North America and Harvard International Relations Council as we are facing a very critical time, as, uh, as we got our right, to say, I should say. And I'll go for a, though it's already covered by the Mr. Van Vinoas, but I'll skip whatever he has covered. And the rest of the thing, I'm waiting for my slide. Uh, my name is uh, Mushfikul Fazal. I'm waiting. Uh, for this and I'm taking this time and I'm working as a United Nations correspondent as partly White House correspondent for Just News Media. Yeah. And I also face a critical time for my uh, ruling authority. Uh, you know, the I'll go uh, into in Bangladesh, especially the very recent act which is passed by the ruling government to control the media in Bangladesh. As I am from Bangladesh, and I will focus on that. And the, as I mentioned, this is a very uh, a horrific incident we have seen about Mr. Khashoggi. I'll, if technical difficulties are solved, I will try to uh, show his voice. Because I, I don't want to go in his detail. Already you've got the picture about his career and who he is and what was his background. But he only one thing he said, I, want, I don't want to uh, change the government. I, want, I don't want to change the ruling authority. I'm not, I just want only one thing that I want to write and I want to say. Just simply one thing he wished to. It, is, it's, it was his wish that freely he can express his views, freely he can express what he believes. That is his only fault, and he got the uh, he, he is targeted by the the way you know this this incident. I did not find any example from the history. This is a this is a safe entity we know the sovereign entity when country within the country you can say in the consulate and he what the way he you know disappeared and they killed by the ruling authority. I cannot describe in the words what horrific it is. And the already he mentioned the book. Can I get my slide? Okay. Okay, go ahead and I'm trying to continue. And uh, you know the as mentioned that uh, the two fellow journalists from the Reuters, those who are working in Myanmar, and they just simply they are doing their job, the investigating reporting. You know, it's nothing is hidden. Everything is visible. Everywhere can this is a global <coughs> village. If I want to hide something, it cannot be. It, is, it will be discovered one day. But the, the, just the report and they try to especially the, the, the his in their investigating reporting was the ten, you know, the Rakhine, Rakhine people that died, they killed by the 
the Law Enforcement Agency, and they try to discover what happened and the, you know, the Rakhine state, and that's why the, the police invited them in a, in a lunch, and then they, after this lunch, they finished, they are going out, and the Law Enforcement Agency picked up and they got the 14 years, you know, uh, punishment from the ruling authority. At least they disclose, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they, they still they are not disappeared or they are not killed, at least they are alive. So even then, where we are talking right now in the United States of America, you know, I, I, have, I got that opportunity to, uh, to cover the uh, president, uh, even the outside, you know, the Berlin and the London. In London, when I cover, I, I went to the White House press corps uh, to cover him, and because I have to focus on, on to what's going on and how they receive the president like the United States of America. And you know, the, the, the balloon and all these things, what happened. And I reported accordingly, beside the uh, president's schedule, I report, you know, obviously, the things is happening. And I should say, even that all these circumstances is happening, all these incidents is happening, and I, and I can, I, I, and as I can mention, uh, I can mention about the Jim Acosta, one of our fellow colleagues, what he, how he treated in the recently in the pre president's press conference, you know. And, and this is not the, uh, this, this, uh, this is very uncomfortable, not for the American journalists, for the world as well, because as we know, America is a patron of the freedom of press, rule of law, and the freedom of expression, and the human rights. So from an outside journalist, it's a shameful for the, for us as well that those who are patronizing our democratic values, institutions, but these incidences are happening in the highest office of the country. So this this is incidents. This thing is happening. But I want to try to relate that I, well, from my personal experience, I report accordingly what happened in London. If I report from Bangladesh, one of the fellow journalists from Bangladesh is here, especially uh, Najbul. Why he will agree with me that and the Rob by is here, I think. Yeah. If I report, you know, I I'm covering with Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in, in example for example, I'm covering in in New York. But if I try to you know report anything, at least I will be in jail. Mm -hmm. I cannot be you know accompany President uh, Prime <coughs> Minister Hasina in her aircraft or the other aircraft to go to Bangladesh because. Our journalism, so I, I still, uh, the, 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 all these things are happening, but I have to say, this is the beauty of America, that we can say whatever we feel. Though there is obstruction, obstruction <coughs> going on, the freedom of press is control, we're trying to, you know, but not that much control, the society is accepting that. And the establishment is accepting that. I mean, I mean our country, where I'm, I'm from, the, the whatever the chief executive say, this is the law. Chief executive means <coughs> prime minister of the country. So there is nothing in between. You know, the simple thing is you have to be, you, you are free to talk. But you have to talk on my behalf. This is the freedom of my country. Nothing is in between. You have to be my man. Otherwise, you will be like anything. Otherwise, you so, uh, so this thing is, you know, in happening in our country. And the very draconian law, I have to say, in digital, Act, which introduced by the unelected parliament, that to controlling the media and the press. Now, media trans uh, transparency depends on police and law enforcement agency. They will decide what is the report, what the basis of the report, if it is true or not. If the thing, and against the prime minister, the, there is a clause. You know, I, I'm still I'm waiting for the. I wish I will get my slide. So still I'm waiting for that. But there perhaps, is a perhaps, cannot, perhaps he's facing a uh, repression of media. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, can, you cannot say anything uh, against, if you say anything like, like they say, embarrassed to the, embarrassment of the government. I cannot embarrass any of my writing. Otherwise, I'll be, I'll be prosecuted. There is, I think, the, uh, even the lifelong <laughs> sentence is there in the law 14 years, 10 years, and the, I think, 50. Thousand Bangladeshi currency in terms of dollar you can exchange. So you know, so this is the law. But before the law, what happened in Bangladesh? We are talking about the Draconian law, the digital act. But is whenever the this government is in power without a, you know, 
in a so-called selection, in the name of election, they are trying to control in the media. And media is, you know, the, for their survival, they are trying to adjust with the government. Some people, they are, some journalists, they are very bright. I'll mention in my slide if I go. So they are trying, and those who are bright, their address will be the, 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 the in the prison, you know. So many, many of journalists, I can mention 82 years journalist, uh, Shafiq Rehman, he was in jail. And last episode, last and the very serious episode was the Shafiqul Alam. You already mentioned that. What he said? He just appeared in Al Jazeera. He said about the what incident is going on, why people are demanding, particularly students, they are demanding for the for the road safety. And he just he appeared in the Al Jazeera, he said, and the, he told that what he believes, what's going on, and how they are uh, how they he, you know they are uh, uh, going for the protest. So, and that's why they, they picked up and 24 hours, he was, uh, more than 48 hours, he was disappeared. Nobody claimed that he is picked up by the law enforcement agency. But then they declared, you know, he said in an interview that they, they, he is beaten up and they are, you know, physically tortured. And his cloth was, you know, and then they cleaned the cloths with the, uh, they removed the blood, and then the, he wear again this cross. And they say, I cannot justice in this country. So this uh, Bangladesh is, uh, I'm comparing to the uh, developed world. You know, still there is, I, as I mentioned, and the, and the Bangladesh developing world. But why we are telling this in this country? But very distinguished panelists that they are, you know, I can say the Ali Iftihar is a good, Pattern of free journalism, working for the Committee to Protect Journalists, and a very good friend and trusted friend of Bangladesh, who saw enemy and the friend means Pakistan and Bangladesh as ambassador. So he has. Okay. Okay. okay, so um, uh, I'm, uh, it's uh, bad luck for me, uh, what I have uh, tried to project, you know, very brief way, so I'm not getting any uh, support, technical support and technical difficulties I have got. So even then, you know, so, uh, we, those who we are participating here, we know everything, what's going on in Bangladesh and what's going on in America. But only one thing, we have to raise our voice. If we say, okay, what's going on? Okay, I'm not going to Bangladesh. Okay, I have some property and I, I just sold out and I bought a beautiful house and my children are going there. So, because we are from that country and we are living in America, you are living in America and you have got tremendous support from your country people, from your parents, from your roots. So we cannot forget about it. Forget about the uh, obligation. You know, so we have to raise our voice. We have to, some, someone has to raise the voice. And you know, this, uh, very recently, the uh, uh, you know, Bangladesh is, uh, the next election will be held. I, I hope the, uh, one of the speakers will address this issue, how the, uh, the government of the uh, United States of America and civil society, they are observing the situation. You know, the election commission declared a schedule, another schedule for the election. But there is a no level playing field, you know. Everything is under control by the ruling authority. You don't have any speech, you do not have a freedom of association. But He served as a research assistant to the Middle East Institute and...
uh, interned at the U.S. Department of State. Uh, she has also worked with Amnesty International and has written for Vice News. Uh, fluent in Urdu and proficient in Arabic, Ms. Uh, Ithaba. Thank you. Thank you everyone for having uh, attacked more than a dozen journalists in the recent weeks who had been covering protests as well as municipal elections. Just earlier this week, Shahidul's fifth attempt at bail was denied by the court, despite the judge noting inconsistencies in the police report filed after his arrest and that the accusations against Shahidul didn't match the interview footage. journalists in Bangladesh that criticizing the government can land you in jail. As the country gears up for elections next month, they cannot claim to hold free or fair elections as long as journalists are behind bars in the country. Thank you for your uh, thoughts, Ms. Afrikar. Uh, I'd like to next invite Mr. Adam Carroll. Uh, he's with the UN program, uh, he's a U uh, United Nations program director for Burma Ta Task Force. Um, there he seeks to promote both awareness and action on mass displacement, refugee rights, trafficking, and genocide prevention relevant to Rohingya crisis. He also promotes partnerships, for example, encouraging the formation of the Jewish Alliance of Concern over Burma, Jacob. Uh, Mr. Carroll has worked at Amnesty International, Peace Corps, and three American Corps National Service programs. Mr. Carroll. Yes, I'll stand because I've got the Thanks, Thanks for Thanks for <laughs> um, so, um, so the next slide, please. <laughs> We're indeed in a very cozy room here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, the other way. Maybe bring it back a little bit further away. Yeah. Okay, we'll get bits and pieces of this. There you go. Yep, okay. That's, that's so, uh, so in short, we, uh, 
we're concerned. Of, we want the policymakers to use the word genocide. We want to see the UN and the U.S. Congress to be very active on this issue. In U.S. Congress, sanctions bills have been blocked for over a year, uh, especially in the Senate by Mitch McConnell, who claims to be personal friends with Aung San Suu Kyi and is trying to uh, misguidedly protect her. Uh, however, these sanctions bills don't target Aung San Suu Kyi, despite her complicity, but they target the military, who are the perpetrators of genocide. Uh, we're also interested in peacekeepers, as Sheikh Hasina has recommended, uh, to, uh, to facilitate eventual repatriation. Maybe you could just try to get rid of this thing. Yeah, that'll Okay. And uh, turn the screen over to this way. Is that gonna there? I think that's probably Okay. We'll, we'll gonna be at an now. angle, but All right. it fits. Uh, very uh, artistic. All right, so next slide. So uh, besides uh, rallies, of course, and speaking to lobbying and speaking to policymakers, we're at the UN, we're at Congress, we're, we, we tried to uh, build Uh, international religious freedom. Um, so next slide. Um, so again, I think we, you know about the Rohingya, but unfortunately this whole uh, idea of, of their identity has become so politicized and distorted by certain Islamophobes. Uh, next slide. So um, this, uh, as you know, Mark Sen, he said uh, uh, Rohingya did not come to Burma. Burma came to Rohingya. They certainly predate the colonial era. Uh, Burma was created around them. The, the uh, borders were, were bo uh, driven among them. And it's like the Rakhine Buddhists, they've been there for a long time. Um, and instead, uh, we have people like this, Ai Chan, uh, uh, um, Ai Chan and some others, who are trying to uh, claim that they never existed, they were brought over by the colonial powers, uh, that, that their name is, is, uh, is invented in the 1950s. A lot of baseless arguments, but there are certainly Islamophobes both in the United States and in Europe who also You have Kachin, you've got Shan, you've got uh, Karen, you've got many other ethnic groups uh, that are locked in struggle with the central government over generations. Um, Rohingya have not been, in recent decades, at all violent, except for these very well-known attacks on border posts that unfortunately were used as pretext for the massive crackdown um, in 2016 and 2017. Next. So they've been marginalized over the years. As you know, um, they, uh, they have uh, had their citizenship taken away in 1982. Before that, they, they were um, citizens. Um, there are various statements by elected leaders attesting to that fact. Um, so they were rendered stateless. Uh, next. Um, the, the, as they became, uh, they lost their rights one by one, they couldn't uh, travel legally between villages, they were locked down, no rights to education, no rights to work, uh, a, a living hell, uh, a, a lack of rights 
and it not that that was enough. The, these uh, nationalist Buddhists um, could fill stadiums with hate, mm -hmm. with denouncing this minority community, which is two percent of the entire population of Burma, and yet they were being discussed as a threat, as an existential threat to the entire nation. And uh, you know, uh, people like 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 this so-called scholar who who is teaching in Japan call them viruses, call the Rohingya viruses. So you have a lot of this hate speech. Next, of course, not all Burm all Buddhists they don't all um, support this, but a lot of them in Burma are quiet, and uh, there's a lot of propaganda. Um, Time magazine several years ago did call out one of the major leaders, uh, who is Wiratu. Without and against Muslims in general. Uh, next, um, so we'll skip this over. This is just uh, comparing Rakhine Buddhists. Rakhine State is in the northwest. Uh, and Rohingya Muslims in terms of what kind of rights they, they have and what kind of access to medical care. And of course, the Rohingya Muslims in this very poor state uh, are suffering terribly. Next slide. Um, so 300 um, uh, uh, mosques were burned, uh, often with collusion of the local authorities. Next slide. And, uh, and IDP camps were, were formed even before the crackdown in 2017. They said, oh, our algorithm, our, you know, our, we'll, we'll solve everything. It didn't. And they are culpable in, or complicit, one might say. They have seen their error, but this is after a lot of suffering has gone on. Um, they only months ago took down the Facebook pages of the generals um, who are responsible for the genocide. And of course, that sparked a huge outcry among the nationalists in Burma. So again, the next year, but many, many attacks and mass rapes, uh, which have been very well documented by the uh, UN. Next. Um, in August 25th, the day after uh, Kofi Annan shared his uh, uh, roadmap to coexistence, the uh, all hell broke loose, loose in Rakhine State, 350 uh, villages, 75% uh, of all the Rohingya villages were burned by the military. Certain uh, divisions, brigades of the Bur Burmese army were brought in 
already notorious for mass rapes in other ethnic, rape, uh, ethnic states. Um, and so they were brought in uh, to do this dirty work. And I think you all know the terrible things, terrible atrocities against children, against women, on a mass scale. Next slide. Um, so um, we'll skip over this, but this has all been t really well documented by satellite imagery. Next. And also, as we know, there are mass graves, which brings us a bit to Wallon and his partner, um, because th they were arrested exposing mass graves, mass killings, um, and you know, brought into a kind of sting operation. But even worse than sting, they were handed documents and then arrested. And so um, this kind of setup was, as was mentioned earlier, uh, admitted to by one of the um, participants in the military or the uh, police who has now been arrested and his whole family has lost their lodging, has been evicted in, in collective punishment against him. Um, so they have become a cause celebre, and we have to say that there's a lot of attention to them. Um, however, um, uh, there are many other uh, cases, and just keeping them on the screen for a minute, um, I wanted to uh, read um, a couple of other quick uh, cases that have come up that you may not be aware of. Uh, well, of course, Fiona McGregor, starting with BBC. She was fired for mentioning the Rohingya mass rapes um, uh, because um, her uh, publication, the Myanmar Times, was pressured by the government. Um, uh, Radio Free Asia was... Uh, corruption uh, of, of a journalist, Ko So Mo Tun. Uh, one editor, chief editor of um, a, uh, uh, it's called um, Myanmar Now Media, uh, he was charged defamation of, of the monk Wirafu. Uh, Wirafu had praised the killing of the chief lawyer of the NLD party, Aung San Suu Kyi's party, last year. He was very proud. He was celebrating killing this monk, this Buddhist monk. It, it's shocking, and yet when Most of the lawsuits are from the government and not from the military. Um, there have been 43 uh, journalists charged in the last two years uh, and uh, under 25 different charges. So it's a very harsh media environment. And there are some really brave people, next slide, uh, who are speaking out. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's, it takes a lot to, in this environment for civil society to keep operating. A lot of them are being under watch, you know, by surveillance and so forth. Uh, and so the, they are, are doing very well to keep the, these cases, especially Wallone and his partner, alive. Next, next slide. So just to wind up quickly, because uh, there's so much that could be said. Uh, just recently, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi in uh, Vietnam, maybe heard, she 
uh, stood her ground and said uh, she didn't see anything wrong with the the, uh, the arrests and, and to show her what was wrong with, with this whole thing. Um, and, you know, ignoring the fact that it was a setup, ignoring so many injustices built in, and the mistreatment of the two journalists in jail where they were hooded and beaten. Next slide. Um, so uh, you, many of you are from Bangladesh. You're aware, well aware of all the challenges in the refugee camps. Next slide. Uh, so I won't go into that now, uh, but just to say that you know within Bangladesh, re reporting on this, reporting on plans to move uh, refugees to these islands, really low lying, possibly quite unsafe. Uh, Dengar Char, Bashar Char, these different islands. This is these are very sensitive matters uh, that the the government seems to be trying to keep uh, away from the media. There are some important stories. That said, uh, government is doing great in terms of, of um, hosting so many refugees. Next slide. But unfortunately, has been playing along with Burma as far as uh, periodically announcing, oh, there's going to be repatriation. The poor Um, many countries, Russia recently, but others, sell arms to the, the military of Myanmar. This must stop. This is something that we have to demand that stops. We, are, we should not be allowing uh, that. And we have uh, peace laureates calling into genocide, speaking out. We need more people. We need you to reach out and speak out. Uh, we have some flyers here on the, on the table. Next slide. So afterwards, I hope you'll get a chance. This is one of the one, most wonderful uh, advocates for the Rohingya. She's not a journalist, but she writes reports. There's a 443-page rep uh, report that was just uh, done by uh, the UN. Uh, she also cooperated with it. She's banned from Burma, but she is the special rapporteur to, to Burma, and she's supposed to be there be, having access to people, being able to report honestly about the human rights situation. Next slide. And I'll end uh, just saying that because there's a possibility that because of the great impact of this crisis on Bangladesh, that Bangladesh, as a member of the International Criminal Court, can allow um, a referral in its name uh, to the International Criminal Court, even though Burma is not a member. The U.S. doesn't like the ICC. A lot of countries are afraid of, of li any limits on their sovereignty. But the International Criminal Court is an essential part of the um, human rights architecture of multilateralism, of the hope of justice. And so we are very hopeful that there will be some measure of justice eventually for the Rohingya through this mechanism. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation. I'm going to stop.